Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla Review and today I'm taking a look at the second part of a two-part drop of absolutely awesome Gundam Sea Destiny kits. If you haven't seen the first one already, that is this over here. The mind-blowingly awesome for a high-grade Infinite Justice Gundam. It is really good, just like you would have expected from the awesome high-grade Justice Knight. This is... I would even say that bit better. But as for today, we're going to be taking a look at the high grade Wyndham. This is impressive for a whole bunch of different reasons. The main reasons being it is cheap, it is easy to build, it has the fine build system, but it might just be the best kit based on the fine build system ever. As usual, if you do want one of these of your own, or if you do want an Infinite Justice as well, there will be links down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. Anyway, here we go. So getting right on into the review now, and there is the high-grade Wyndham with absolutely everything that it comes with. And keep in mind, this is a fine build system kit. And man, does it come with a lot. This is around 1,400 yen, so it's not quite army builder cheap, but it's close to it. It comes with a backpack, shield, rifle, uh, yeah, it's got a lot of stickers. These are mainly for on the backpack as you can see I did not use them but it still looks fantastic and the Wyndham itself is one of the most awesome looking grunts I've ever laid my eyes on with that super cute massive bug like v-fin but anyway before we take a look at all this let us check out the box and the manual so taking a look at the box first there is the box I tell you that you need not just one but you need two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that ten? Ten minimum. That's uh, that's a lot of Windoms, but that would look pretty cool. I will mention that the box art on this, I think, has been a little bit affected by the alcohol I sprayed it with because, you know, staying safe and all that. But regardless, it still looks beautiful. Flipping it around to the first side here. We have a blurb right there about the Windom. So I won't pretend that I've seen Gundam Seed Destiny because I have not yet. So all I know is pretty much what is written on this box right here, and if you want to read that yourself, you can pause this video right now. But if you don't want to pause it and read it, the gist is, it's a grunt that's based on the strike, and it's pretty much just as capable. On to the other side. So on here we can see what we get in the box, the front and the rear of the Wyndham fully loaded up. There is the accessories that we get in here, some missiles, beam sabers, rifle and shield. Sliding that over, we've got some images of what it will look like in action, and I can tell you already, this looks fantastic in action. And we've got the Jet Striker Pack in here, it's articulated. And this can be used with other high-grade Striker Packs. And this must be a one-peg older style Striker Pack because this guy right here does only have one peg. Not the two-peg standard that we see in kits right now. And like I've been mentioning throughout this review so far, this is based on the fine build system. In case you don't know what the fine build system is, that little bit of a diagram right there will give you the gist. These are joints like what you would see in the 30 minute missions or other fine build kits we would have seen before, which are grunts like the Leo, Maganak, and the Death Army, if I'm not mistaken. That is them all as far as I know, but if this is fine build and those are fine build, in my opinion, this is the best fine build kit yet and has taken it to a crazy new level. Now let's check out the Wyndham itself. Wait, but before I do that, let's take a quick look at the manual. There is the specs of the mobile suit itself, in case you're into that particular stuff. I know I am. You gotta know this thing has a Toda Shrekken. I don't know what a Toda Shrekken is, but I'm sure I'm gonna find out soon. But what you wanna see is around here on the back. So here we have some info on the mobile suit itself. You can pause and read that if it's not shaking around too much. Get yourself up to speed with the mobile suit. We have some information right there on the Jet Striker Pack. Some info on the beam rifle, some info on the multi-purpose missiles, but as far as I know, there's only one purpose for a missile. I doubt he's delivering packages with them. Unless his packages are bombs! <laughs> and we have a little bit of a story blurb right there as well, if you want to check that out. But now, now, onto the model kit. But anyway, without any further ado, that right there is the high-grade Wyndham in all of its glory. And this definitely is glory. I love this thing. That gym style head with that absolutely massive bug-like V-fin blows my mind and the color separation on this is crazy for a grunt. I mean seriously just look at that head it's white of the head, yellow for the v-fin, we've got blue as well as that kind of teal like color on top of it and none of that is stickers. Actually there isn't even a single sticker on this. So as for this ginormous set of stickers that we did get in the box this is entirely entirely for its equipment. This number four right here, that is for on the ridge section of the shield right here, and the rest of them there, as far as I know, are for using on this striker pack. But I actually like this in that nice cool gray, so, or is that a warm gray? It's a gray nonetheless, 
and it looks fantastic just like this. Great detailing on there, but we'll be looking at that later. Back to this guy. Next up there is the view from the back, and if you're like me, you'll notice that this has just one hole. So that does mean that any modern adapter, like uh, your boy high-grade Destiny right here, this kind of standard one we get on most modern high-grade kits. Anything for this will not be compatible with this, and in general, most kits will not be compatible with it. The backpacks, I mean. I don't personally have any kind of high-grade seed kits that use this sort of thing, like the Strike, etc., so that does mean I have nothing to use with this, and it would have been nice if they included some kind of adapter, just a simple peg to two-hole adapter so you can use other kind of packs with this particular kit right here, but if you have a lot of seed high grades that do have that style of pack hole, hey, then you're golden. So once again, for a fine build system kit, this does have a lot of nice detail and a lot of features that you wouldn't expect on something like that. The color separation is fantastic for something so simple, and all in all, I am incredibly, incredibly impressed by this. And just in case you're curious, because I always forget to mention this, this is all I use to panel line this. So this is a black and white, white, I mean gray, Gundam marker, and this is the Sumi Ire type. So that means it is just the fine liner style pen that you can just draw into the lines and rub off with your finger or an eraser or something like that. This is a kit that is a little bit on the cheap end of the high grade scale, or at least the modern high grade scale, so it doesn't have a lot of premium features. So it does feature quite a few surface seam lines, like what you're seeing right here, as well as a lot of surface nub marks. But I only cut this out with two snips of the God Hand Nipper, that is it. And still, the nubs aren't really all that prominent. So again, for such a simple kit based on the fine build system, this thing's impressive. Anyway, before I forget, there is the full 360 60 degree spin so you can see this thing from absolutely every angle make up your own decision whether you like this or not But something inside me tells me that you will this thing is a fantastic take on the Gundam style design Next up there is what it will look like in a collection I will mention once again This is predominantly master grade and fairly big kits and figures So it will look a little bit on the small side, but I did throw in another couple of high grades Recent high grades that is with it so you can get a general idea of what size this is and this isn't even equipped yet There is no backpack and this this is quite big. Those big old shoulders and feet make the other kits behind it look a little bit smaller, so it's impressively sized. Finally then, there is it under some natural light because it's such a glorious day outside, and this thing really does shine. This is one beautiful kit. For a fine build system kit, I am thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. The high grade Wyndham? is one beautiful boy. So now moving on to the accessories and there's the high grade Wyndham with everything that it comes with, not including this whole set of stickers right here. So once again, these are for using on the pack over here. I'm only gonna mention this once, but that right there is what it is meant to look like if it was color accurate. So it is very well, not color accurate, but it kind of looks nice in a plain way. I do like this, but of course it has to lose points for that absolute huge lack of color accuracy. So once again, just to summarize what comes in this, it's the standard loadout of sword, which is beam saber, board, which is the shield, and the beam rifle right here. So pretty much the same as what we would have saw with the strike. That of course includes the striker pack over here, which is looking nice, plain, but nice. Now let's check them all out. So first off in here, we do only get the one standard style of hand, which is the, well, standard style of hand. That is the block holding one right here. If you want to attach anything into them, you need to pop off the back just like so. Let's check out the beam rifle now. This is just made of two pieces, so it is very plain. This actually has a fake pivoting handle, so you can see it is kind of faked out there to look like it pivots, but it doesn't. This is just a flat piece attached to the rest, and this is one very nice design of a beam rifle. I'm loving that right there. It is plain once again, but this right here is a grunt, so that does make sense. So pop that in like this, then you pop on the back of the hand like so, and simple as. So that right there is what the Wyndham looks like holding onto that beam rifle, and in general, this does look pretty cool. It does have a little bit of an issue with holding it up, if you tap it like this, it will sag down a little bit, so that may sag over time. Even when fully pushed in, it can be a little bit loose. But once again, that's easy to tighten up, use a bit of super glue, wait for it to dry first, or, uh, well, it would be permanent, wouldn't it? But yeah, once again, I am digging that flat plank of a beam rifle. That is unique. So if the fight does end up in close quarters, we do have a pair of standard beam sabers in here. So this is your general pink beam with a one-piece white handle that just slides into the hand like this. Ever so simple. And when this is not in use, you can see right here, we do have a bit of a tab hole. So 
open this up, or should I say, pull it apart, and then that can be just stored on the side skirting armor, like that, right there. So there's a quick example of what the Wyndham will look like holding onto its beam saber, tilt it down a little bit more so you can see it, and the more and more I look at this kit, the more I love it. The angles, the general design, this thing's cool. So the next piece of equipment we have in here is the shield. So this is white and blue, just like the Wyndham itself. Flip it around to the back and it is quite basic. We do have a large hollow section right here. A lot of those handles are just, well, cast in wide and obviously do not move. This section here should have missiles that are gray and red, I believe. So once again, if you want this to be color accurate, you will have to paint it, but the detailing is still quite nice regardless of the lack of color separation. There is a quick example of what it should look like if it was color accurate and painted, and in case you do wanna grab some paints while you're buying this guy right here, there is the color guide, so you can get the right ones if you don't have them already. As we're attaching the shield, we've got this little adapter segment right here. This can be either attached like this or flipping around like this. There we go, this is what it's like attached on. We do have two bowl joint sections here to attach it. On the underside here, you can see there are two different points at which to attach attach it so I assume this one right here is when it is stored away not for use and this right here is when it's kind of moved forward to use what looks like some kind of killy killy claw on the end right here some spikes which look like they're for use in melee combat I really do like the choice of angle here so that means you can bring it up like this in a defensive position that looks pretty cool right there or you can pop that off and pop it on here for that more kind of traditional on the side of the arm shield approach which can defend like that a little tighter to the body. But for me, one of the most exciting aspects about this kit right here is the striker pack. Shame again about the connection here, not having an adapter to use it on other kits because this is plain, but at the same time, well, it's really to the point. It's a pair of jets and some missiles. What more do you want when it comes to in atmosphere flight? Even though this thing is not color accurate, it does jam in some pretty awesome features. First off, the panel line detailing on this is very fine and it is quite beautiful. I didn't panel line this, so it might be a little little bit harder to see. The nub marks on the missiles there, which are not color accurate per se, are a little rougher than the rest of the kit. But the articulation this thing pops in is great. This can move down like this, up like that. So that means it can be moved down for a kind of upward flight. And we also have the option of moving the wings upwards like so in a kind of like stored position or they can be dropped down like this, which is another kind of stored position. But I guess you'll see and get a better idea of what I mean by that once it's attached. So this just pops into the backpack as simple as that right there. And because it's got some big bits around on the back of its heels, it is not back heavy, so it's not gonna fall over on you. This is some nice design right here. So that right there is what I meant by a kind of stored away position. For example, if it is on the ground, in a hangar, something like that. These can pop up then for flight. There is a view from the bottom. There is a view from above. Once again, I love this pack. These wings here can be angled slightly down or up depending on the kind of flight path you do want it to be taking in whatever pose you're making. And we do have the option of dropping the wings down like this. Is that what I just did? Because you can move them up like this if I already had them down. I'm not sure. I think this is not what I had done. So there's a lot of options here. Upward flight. Woo! So like I did mention, the missiles are not color accurate per se. This is what they should look like. Yes, they are predominantly gray, but we are missing the white and the red and the light gray. These can all be easily detached like this if you want to remove them and uh, fire them off. So we have two types. That is this one right here and this bigger one right here. So there is the full 360 degree spin of the high grade Wyndham fully loaded besides one beam saber that seems to have dropped off. But once again, I cannot express how impressed I am by this rad little dude right here. I mean, the fine build system is, well, such a simple design of a system that I'm surprised that this kit is as good as it is and it's a great sign of things to come. If we see more grunts like this, simple, easy to build, relatively cheap, with a lot of awesome stuff packed in, then I am 100% on board. This makes the original high-grade strike I looked at so many, so many years ago look like an absolute piece of trash, which it was, and this 
I don't know, what can I say? I've said it's impressive so many times, because that's what it is. So anyway, on to the articulation, and as usual, starting from that head down. So the neck on here is that standard polycap joint. Actually, the majority of the joints in here are the usual polycaps that you'll see in a high grade. So that does mean it's a ball joint in the neck and a ball joint in the torso, giving you that giggity 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 goo. So there is the head all the way up, so not bad. All the way down, pretty good. There's the side to side pivot. It is a little bit blocked by the collar there and that can spin all the way around. The predominant movement of the polycaps in the torso is to the front so that is the polycap joint not including that standard ball joint so there is the arm all the way to the front so pretty good. Let's see if we move that around can this get to arm folding level? Oh maybe. Yeah pretty much. Ha! That makes me very very happy. Good darium tier. Well no but hey let's go. Let's continue. So anyway there is the arm all the way up that is above parallel to the ground that is impressive full 360 spin right here. There is the arm just at the shoulder ball joint. There is the arm arm inside of the shoulder. We've got that full 360 spin at the upper arm. There's our bend at the elbow. Very nice. It is worth noting because this is the fine build system. It is just a single point of rotation there. Usually it's a double joint at this point, but not in this kit. And at the wrist, it's just your standard ball and socket. Next up then is the ab crunch. There it is all the way to the back, predominantly down here at the waist. There it is all the way to the front. There is a bit, but it's kind of coming off the ball joint in there. This is your standard polycap ball there and there's a polycap ball up here there is the side to side and we have that full rotation right here so mainly what you're getting is at that polycap ball there down to the skirting armor now these come connected on the runner but you can split them apart these are just a set of ball joints up and down a little bit of in and out but not much really standard side skirt here on the same polycap you usually see so that gives you a lot of this not really a lot of that, but there is a little bit. You'll notice there is a bit of a hollowness to the inside of this, so if you don't like that sort of thing, you might want to fill it. And we've got that very basic, solidified, non-moving butt flap back here, and that's big, so that's going to get really, really in the way of the legs. I will mention at this point I am sticking to my usual rule, that is if anything falls off, it stays off, and there's nothing falling off on this besides this right here. So these are inclined to pop off because they are just kind of held via pressure to these little holes right here. So they can pivot like that, but are easy to pop off because you tend to end up holding them while trying to move the legs. Well, I do anyway. But speaking of legs, it's kick time. There's the kick all the way up to the front, and that is impressive. He's going to take the chin off someone there. There it is out to the back. Of course, that is blocked by that butt flap. Move it out a little bit. Mm, yeah, it's very very blocked there. As for the splits, there's the legs all the way down, down I should say out. It's not going to get on the ground because that butt flap, but that is impressive. Full rotation of the leg right here, but because of this little lip of armor at the front, that does mean it is blocked when it's all the way in like this, but still very natural movement. Next up is that bend at the knee. There we go. This is a double jointed bend. There is no moving gimmicks or anything like that. It is hollow on the inside of the knee, but still quite nice. This thruster on the side of the leg can rotate all the way around. Well, not all the way around. Get stuck there. Spin, 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 spin. It can go, well, clockwise all the way around. And this is just rotating on the axis of this three millimeter peg hole. So pretty good, but once again, some hollow parts, but it is a relatively inexpensive kit. Down at the ankle now, we do have this armor that can pivot like so, separate to the foot. As for the foot, it moves down and up like that. This is just a standard joint, and then we have a ball joint down a little further, which gives us all of this ball joint motion. And I have to admit, I am impressed by the fact that this can tilt its feet like this for some flight poses, as well as bring them up like this, and that reminds me, I think I've forgotten about this lately, but let's check out that functional movement on the ground. Should probably fix this here joint first. Come on, on you go, and... There we go. And I'll also mention at this point, my fingers are not dirty, they're just dyed blue. Don't ask me why. So functional movement on the ground time, there it is all the way to the front. That is extremely, extremely nice. All the way to the back and once again, that is really nice. And there it is, side to side pivot. So that is a little bit blocked because of that armor. So front and back, nice, side to side, not so much. Just like absolutely everything about this kit so far, the articulation is so impressive. The only bit of a letdown is down here at the pivot at the ankle, but besides that, this 
thing kills it. So impressive. So that right there is it for the review. And what can I say? This is kind of tough to rank, honestly, because it is a lower priced kit. It is a fine build system kit. And at the same time, it surpasses them entirely. It packs in a lot of features that more premium high grades would have, but into a lower priced and simplified kit. So that nets this kit right here an impressive gold tier. Sure, there may not be as much plastic in this box as some other high grades, but that is reflected in the price. There is a lot of issues with color accuracy on the backpack, but that is not the biggest deal. It is just the backpack. And at this price, getting a backpack in there is mind blowing. So for a fine build system, almost army builder style kit, this is the best so far. A lot of the other kits like the Leo, the Maganac and the Death Army, they don't have the kind of, well, Gundam style this has, which is kind of hard to simplify. So what Bandai has done here, mixing simple with impressive, has blown my mind entirely. If you love Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny, this is a fantastic time to be a Gunpla builder. Bandai have been killing it lately. We had the RG Impulse Gundam, we had the high grade Destiny Gundam, and we had the high grade Infinite Justice all of which are phenomenal kits. They are making some of the best high grades and real grades they've ever been making with seed kits, which is interesting. But anyway, as always, if you do want one of these of your own, there is a link down there in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews and I will see you next time.